My name is Eliriza, uh, which is rather small for a Greek name, and I sound like a credit card, I know. Um, I don't think I'm an expert in circular economy, but um, we'll, I'll tell you my story and how I got interested to that, and then we'll talk about some of the, um, the concepts. Um, I'm a mechanical manufacturing engineer, and I work in the University of West of Scotland, uh, and that's close to Glasgow, because we University of West of Scotland doesn't um, give much information. Um, I joined Academia a few years ago from working to, um, to a local authority. And when I joined, they were telling me, what do you want your research area to be? You need to find a niche, something that excites you. And being a manufacturing engineer, um, my focus was on quality management. And I started thinking about my own personal story. I grew up in Greece, and I grew up uh, in a family that, um, let's say, weren't very wealthy. And, you know, we were using, we were buying furniture and we were using it for 20, 30 years. We weren't throwing away things, we were fixing things, like the washing machines, the iron. Uh, the, my clothes, many of my clothes were hand down clothes from my brothers or from neighbors. And when I came in the UK, what really struck me was this, how can I say, consumeristic focus. The fact that, especially nowadays, which I think it's the same in Greece, it's cheaper to throw away a washing machine than try and fix it. For me, that was a little bit oxymoron and crazy. The stuff that we throw things away for the sake of buying another one, and then seeing how much waste we produce. Even the food, the food that I throw away is usually one third of what I buy. So that make me think that there must be something that changes the mentality of how we make things. Because in manufacturing, what you want to do, you want to make a lot of products and sell them and make money. It's like faster, cheaper, you know better. But this doesn't work. And, oh, click here. If I know how to use it. <coughs> so, I'll talk in the last, in the next 40 minutes or so that I have about the systems approach, because sometimes you are trying to fix one thing and we break something else. Um, for example, when the first um, LED lamps came out a few years ago, I think it was the first generation, they were fantastic, they were saving energy, but they had lead inside and nobody thought about that. So you fix something, you save energy, but you break something else because they didn't know how to recycle <coughs> them, because the lead is not something that just disappears. So we'll see some more examples. Um, this is um, about community-led initiatives. Uh, I think I may have sent you the wrong presentation, but I think I can wing it. And uh, how we can link circular economy to planning and economic development. The one I have with me, it's a different one, but I think the ideas more or less will be the same. So a circular economy, just one of the most common definitions, is an alternative to a traditional linear economy. So far, we take resources from the earth from, uh, uh, from to make things. We make, we use and dispose. And we keep using resources for as long as possible without extracting the maximum volume of them. So uh, also I think I have um, a, a little graph afterwards. So, so far, we take the minerals, we take the materials, we build something and then we throw away. The circular economy is just keep reusing, just whatever we consider as waste, it's food for some other process. So everything flows and it's circular. So that is uh, some of the diagrams and we'll see another one. Manufacturing or any other process, raw materials we produce, we use and then many of that are not recyclable. The reuse economy, which is like when you're trying to recycle, we recycle some and maybe reuse them, but a big percentage of that is not getting recycled. Actually, I was, um, I was reading some statistics that we've got over 30 different types of plastics and only two of them are you white, you know, white reused. And many of us don't know how to recycle I think we need like a periodic table, what's recycled, where and how. And of course, if we put something 
dirty, like a pizza box, it's, it's his cardboard, but if it's contaminated with food, that does more damage than actually it does good. So even recycling, it's not uh, done properly. I think it's in the UK, only 20% of the plastic that we use goes to recycled. Of, uh, of course, some of that we <coughs> export it. And then many of us, including myself, we don't do it the way we should be doing it. So the circular economy, it's, as the name says, the raw materials, they go in the production, we use them, and then we reuse them. For example, um, I think the next one is the, the butterfly one. That's a very common, um, a very popular uh, diagram. It's called the butterfly diagram. And the blue one, it's the technological cycle, and this one is the biological uh, cycle. So it's about designing products that there are modular built, so we can take them apart and fix if something we can fix it, or use the parts that work on something <coughs> else. And of course, the materials themselves, they are free from toxics and chemicals. And here, uh, the first, it has different loops. It's the third one. I don't have time if we have um, if we have time to to look of some of the um, uh, the third ideas is about sharing resources. For example, my husband in his garage has over 30 different power tools. How often does he use them? Not that much. Or the ice cream maker that we got, you know, a few years ago. An average each person has at least seven electrical devices in their kitchen that they don't use. And this is a new way to serve. We're talking about power tools libraries, they're talking about maker space that you don't have to have a circular show if your neighbor has or you can go somewhere and you can learn and you can have the social aspect and you can use the, the resources and that saves you on money and on space. Then it's the, the reuse, distribute, either the parts of your own company. Um, Canon has a very good case uh, uh, study. They reuse uh, all the materials. Um, they reuse all the products. They come back, they fix them, and they put them back in production. And of course, they're as good as the new ones. Or uh, some of the uh, companies, they can take what is waste from one, and they use this resource. Um, refurbish, remanufacture, that we mentioned, and the recycle. Now, on the biological cycle, it's about using, let's say, the coffee tree. The coffee tree doesn't just give us the beans. The waste of the production can become feedstock, can become fertilizer. So it's taking something and maximize it, its value and returning back, you know, to the process. Now it's my tube, my YouTube. <laughs> And I'll find it. I've got two mouse, two mice. Oh, there it is. <coughs> that is usually for the students, because when I see, yeah, the opposite, the glazed. I think I need to do that as well. Mm -hmm. Okay, sorry for the beep beep. Living systems have been around for a few billion years and will be around for many more. In the living world, there's no landfill. Instead, materials flow. One species' waste is another's food, energy is provided by the sun, things grow, then die, and the nutrients return to the soil safely. And it works. Yet, as humans, we've adopted a linear approach. A new phone comes out, so we ditch the old one. Our washing machine packs up, so we buy another. Each time we do this, we're eating into a finite supply of resources and often producing toxic waste. It simply can't work long term. So what can we do? If we accept that the living world's cyclical model works, can we change our way of thinking so that we too operate a circular economy. Let's start with the biological cycle. How can our waste build capital rather than reduce it? By rethinking and redesigning products and components and the packaging they come in, we can create safe and compostable materials that help grow more stuff. As they say in the movies, no resource
resources have been lost in the making of this material. So what about the washing machines, mobile phones, fridges? We know they don't biodegrade. Here, we're talking about another sort of meeting, a way to cycle valuable metals, polymers, and alloys, so they maintain their quality and continue to be useful beyond the shelf life of individual products. What if the goods of today became the resources of tomorrow. It makes commercial sense. Instead of the throw away and replace culture we've become used to, we'd adopt a return and renew one, where products and components are designed to be disassembled and regenerated. One solution may be to rethink the way we view ownership. What if we never actually owned our technologies? We simply licensed them from the manufacturer. Now, let's put these two cycles together. Imagine if we could design products to come back to their makers, their technical materials being reused, and their biological parts increasing agricultural value. And imagine that these products are made and transported using renewable energy. Here we have a model that builds prosperity long term. And the good news is, there are already companies out there who are beginning to adopt this way of working. A circular economy isn't about one manufacturer changing one product. It's about all the interconnecting companies that form our infrastructure and economy coming together. It's about energy. It's about rethinking the operating system itself. We have a fantastic opportunity to open new perspectives and new horizons. Instead of remaining trapped in the frustrations of the present, with creativity and innovation, we really can rethink and redesign our future. That's it for now, Paul Park. That was a set of credits and uh, their own presentation. But China, despite all the, um, the reputation that it has, uh, they're doing fantastic project, uh, fantastic project uh, progress in circular economy. Um, they have um, uh, systems that they can um, use bicycles. They leave them somewhere and somebody else picks them up. And some of the higher companies, like Sixth, I think they have something else. Because imagine, for example, when we were talking about systems approach, I want to hire a car, I go to the hiring place, I take the car, I go to my destination, then I have to return it there. Imagine if after I hire the car, my neighbor hires a car, he has to do the same wasted trip. So sixth, uh, with BMW, they have a new system that you have an app and you drop the car wherever you want it, and then the next person that it's close by picks it up from there just a very simple concept and um, China does the same with mobiles or as the, um, the clip explaining it was about in most universities I'm assuming the same as here we don't own our multifunction devices the zero quants yeah, we have zero zero anyway it's the company that owns them so we hire them and then if something happens they come and fix them what if we were doing the same with our white goods we didn't own our washing machines or our fridges. We hire them. If they break, they come and fix them. And if we don't use them, they come and take them away and then use the useful parts. Simple concepts, but they need the systems approach. And there are so many other examples that this can be used. Uh, for example, 82% um, of our cars, they don't go anywhere most of the time. I drive 15 minutes to go to my work and my car stays there for 10, 8 hours. What if somebody else, what if I didn't own the car and then somebody else could use it? The same with the buildings. It's like 40% of offices lying empty and then you've got people not having to, to stay. So <coughs> the same uh, way with agriculture or any other services, there is there can be an element as said of uh, circular economy. Um, in the workshop that we were with Anna, it was uh, an inventor from Colombia 
that uh, was working on uh, producing footwear, uh, sports and bags out of aloe vera fibers, which is a fantastic idea because our, uh, most of them are plastic. The same way, for example, that Dell and many other companies collect the plastic from the sea and they use it to make covers for the, for the new laptops. And sometimes people do it because they suit and we suit. Sometimes they do it um, out of necessity. Some of my products, uh, some of my projects, they took me to Africa. And the women there in some of the areas that I work, they use banana fibers to make rugs and baskets and things like that. Something that people in Western society, they wouldn't even consider. And it's like circular and it's localized economy, which that's what we need. Uh, some of my other groups, they use paper. Actually, the, the irony is they have to go and buy the paper to make paper bead necklaces and paper bead plates. So we see how what we throw away could be food for somebody else to make a living. And the same goes, uh, even as I said, in the industrial places. Um, growth of in, in recycling industry that I mentioned here is as that we think we do it uh, in the UK. There is um, um, a process, but it's only 20%. And the things will get uh, harder because China stopped refusing our, um, our products, so our recycled products. So we need to find different ways to, uh, to absorb them or to do something with them. Um, and the irony is that developing countries produce 70% of the, the waste that they uh, produce worldwide. So and about uh, the other thing that China are doing well, uh, it's the green consumption. Uh, they start working with communities, although they are quite hierarchical society, uh, towards smart, healthy and safe consumption. And that's something that many of us uh, could learn from. So the circular economy, I mentioned earlier, it's the systems approach. We cut a habit in most of the places that I work that we work in silos. I do my research, I do my bid, I do my office, and I don't know what my colleagues are doing. And imagine that happening in the big scale. So a system approach looks overall the flow. And the plan is to design out waste of pollution. As I mentioned earlier, um, the LED, uh, first labs are example. Think about the solar panels. The solar panels, they've got a lifespan of 25 years, I think and they are not recyclable. So 25 years, all these solar farms, they will have a lot of waste to, to account for. So it's about making things that we can take them apart and we can do something that we don't have any chemicals. Design our waste of pollution is like creating fabrics, materials, or using materials that uh, when we throw, when we I use with my top, I can just put it in my garden and we know it will biodegrade and it will feed my, uh, my vegetables. It's about keep products and materials in use. As I said, we don't want, if something is broken, to throw it away. We don't want this, this waste. And regenerate natural systems um, and that links with biomimicry that we will see later as well. Because nature doesn't have waste, it has, a, it has a way to sort out itself and everything returns to that. The things that don't return, it's the man-made ones. <coughs> Some of the system components, um, it's the materials recovery. And that is like, um, I'm working with uh, one of our students from Nigeria for um, what they call V, which is not what first I thought it was. It's about waste of electronic electrical equipment. We buy mobiles every year. My kids have laptops, tablets, computers, and every couple of years sometimes we replace them because we have to. But it's one of them. They have precious elements, they have chemicals, they have things that we can actually reuse them. Uh, we keep digging, for example, for precious metals when they have a big source of, uh, of them with our electronic equipment. And linking to systems approach, um, the laptops, most of the laptops, for example, they're not modular built. If uh, the battery dies or if a component stops working, you cannot open it easily, at least till a few years ago, 
and fix it or upgrade it. So that is something that needs to be addressed on the modularity. And that's the circular design for products. Business models, uh, some of the business models, it's the ones that we, we sell resources, the ones that we don't have to buy everything. Not every household has a, needs a carpet cleaner uh, or you know something like that, but it stays in the garage. And then it's a more strategic level, circular economy as um, strategy, the global material flows and circular cities on a wider scale. And there are many fantastic examples of circular uh, cities. Um, Netherlands, for example, they use um, solar uh, mosaics for their, their cycle paths. So during the day, the absorbed energy at night time, you don't have to use electricity, you go over them. And some of them, they're very artistic. They have Van Gogh and nice designs. And they're looking into actually having piezoelectronic, I think it's the word. So when you go over the cycle path, your phones get charged if, is, if needed. So um, many different models. Mm -hmm. Materials recovery, it's the one who said, whatever we put in a production or in a service or anything we design, we'll be able to take it back. And we'll be able, if, the w if there is not recycled waste, we can dispose it responsibly. But the idea is not to have the pollution, the pollution <coughs> built into that. Uh, how much time do I have before I... How much time is like 10 minutes left? I don't want to cut through. So it's okay. 15 minutes, okay. <laughs> so uh, materials recovery is something that, um, as I said, we used to do uh, the way my parents and myself um, I grew up, we used to Frankenstein um, uh, things from uh, like if the neighbor's washing machine wasn't working, we will exchange part and trying to find something. So it's about taking all the materials back and there is a big gap in the market and there is a big um, financial benefit because if you take back what you put in, then you have more um, resources, you don't um, waste your money. As I said, Canon, I don't know if we have the link here, I don't remember, um, but if you visit the Canon, uh, it takes all the reused products back, they take them apart, they check them, and then they build them into the new production. And the benefits of this approach uh, will be like a wider uh, system around individual um, product. Collecting assets, as I said, um, you know, taking the money that you put in your production it, uh, it's a source of income. And that is um, uh, the example. And that is a quite long history. Circular economy, it's a hot topic the last few years, but Canon uh, started in 1992. Uh, and ironically, things around sustainability, they go back as 50 years, but probably you weren't just um, listening. So what they do uh, by taking the used equipment, they remanufacture it, Reduce this product, uh, greenhouse houses, and they're using 80% of the materials. In certain industry, the waste is built into the cost and they don't really concern about that. Oil and gas sector is a good example. Um, one of my uh, collaborators, um, it's a leather company and they put leather uh, car sheets and luxurious cars. But because the companies pay for the whole leather they use, they don't care if they only cut a little bit and the rest of the leather, it's thrown away and they actually either burn it or they have to pay to dispose it. For me, that's waste and unethical because you can take the extra leather and you can do other things. You can work and make bags or you can cut them and make uh, strings for jewelry or many other uh, uh, uses. Circular design for products. And said so that it has to do with uh, the modularity and the sustainability of the resources. Um, there are examples in the fashion industry and um, one of the examples I think I had uh, kids are very anti-environmental friendly I think they use a lot of equipment mostly made out of plastic in about the 10-15 years of the life and one of the examples about the circular design it's this company that designs 
uh, bicycles uh, that they grow with the kid. It's like if IKEA were making bikes, that would be it. The, all the components come in a box, you build it, so it's a bonding exercise. And as the kid grows, the, the model changes. So you go from the little tricycle to the bicycle and then to something else. So you pay about as much as you would pay for a kid's bike, but it can last 10, 15 years. Simple design. And I think there is a British company, it's called Isla, that they use the business models that we mentioned earlier. You don't buy the bicycle, you hire it, and they try to make the bicycle grow with the kid. And because you hire the bike, when the kid are done its size, you give it back and you take the bigger size. So simplicity, but it's ingenious as well. And um, or in the business model um, <coughs> section, said even if an asset has been designed appropriate, uh, has been designed as it should, to be durable, repairable, free of toxic materials. The impact will be limited if the business model is not in place to capture the benefits. And that's what the system approach. We need the supply chain. When you talk, the company will come back and take the washing machine or whatever it's brought in. We need to know about the repairs logistics and you need to know it in a way that it minimizes carbon impact, you know, the most efficient way. For assets in the technical cycle, there is a range of options that they can help keep products and material at their highest value. Durable items could be offered with a deposit to ensure the repair and the resale blue proposition. Um, if we think any kind of product is made of different parts and they don't all have the same life cycle and that's where the, the business model approach is because if um, my graphics card can last for three years but the rest of my, my computer can last for ten years, how can I how can I ensure you know that it's sustainable and it fits to that model? And that's why some assets can be kept in use for longer through maintenance, as long as spare parts and supporting documentation are readily available. Um, I used to work in Hoover in Scotland, and um, I got one of the products. But um, it, when my filter, a part of the the, the motor wasn't working it would cost me twice to bring to find the part and bring the engineer than actually go and buy a new product. So it, it, it just it didn't make sense to me. And some businesses may choose to move from selling products to service, providing access instead of ownership. Um, we do, um, it's a stigma around using reused products. It's something that we got over with cars who are feeling more comfortable buying second hand cars now but we don't feel comfortable in that with other aspects. So that is about people's mentality. Um, that is some of the, the business models that it's the, the maker's face, that it's a Toronto tool library, and there are many of them. Um, I know at least a few uh, in Scotland. Scotland is doing quite well around circular economy, uh, but it can be around anything. It's not just about tools. It can be any other equipment. It's about sharing resources. Um, Local authorities try to do it in Scotland uh, with sharing services around HR and IT, but I don't think they, they thought um, the systems approach and they didn't really work. And then we're talking about circular economy as um, a strategy. I said it's not just a company does it or you know an academic does it or a person does it. It's about thinking that are everyday things. Um, you have one of my colleagues um, we did grocery shopping and he was buying Tupperware because he's very health conscious and he brings lunch to work but at the same time you know he was buying the Tupperware to put his food but then I saw him throwing away the Tupperware from the ice cream tubs I'm thinking just a simple thing use the ones that from the takeaway that you got last night or something like that use these resources it's little changes um, I think the other goes in the other territory. I might stop here um, because that's very texty and I don't want to bore you anymore and it's lunch time. Um, but parts of the circular economy is about um, localizing uh, economies. For example, um, 
or going to the supermarket nowadays and they find everything they find like watermelons in December and all these things it's about going back to the basics in a sense do we need everything wrapped in plastic simple things like that do we need to have everything we want all year round for example when I grew up watermelon was the summer and that was an indication of the season the apples uh, were winter and all of this a convenience and more um, luxurious in a sense li a lifestyle do we really need it because it damages um, uh, the environment we live um, circular fashion um, I will mention that because H&M it's a big company if you give a bag of your old clothes to H&M they give you five pound voucher and what they do they take them apart and they use the fibers into the um, uh, materials uh, or they I think some of them they burn them, which is not very good, but they try and maximize the use of the fabrics. So it's a lot of um, designers and fashion houses start doing that. And then it's about um, circular cities, is how we design our places. For example, if I design a play area in the middle of um, somewhere that there are no pathways and people have to take the cars and you know the older people cannot walk to get there, is that really the best option? How we design our services and our uh, planning around our city? And that's the, um, the cycle plus that I mentioned uh, in Amsterdam, for some that they have uh, Van Gogh. So that is one of the many examples that companies, um, cities do it good, but not as good as we could. And um, that part was part of the urban planning uh, for the specific um, uh, for the um, for the urban cities that you need to have this consultation you need to co-design things with uh, with our the stakeholders and whoever you are working um, should I stop here is it uh, because if it's 40 minutes okay mm. it's not going to start something um, that was a case study, um, which is, I think, quite uh, current because it's about agriculture. Um, the current linear approach um, to agriculture remove nutrients from the soil and pass them through a value uh, chain. But as I said, there are finite reserves of many key resources. And as I said, the same goes for the precious metals and uh, many other elements. There is no synthetic alternative to phosphorus. The specific company has developed technology that can incorporate treatment plants in, into treatment plants, allowing phosphorus and other nutrients to be recovered from industrial uh, wastewater streams. The product can be marketed, distributed, and sold to blenders, growers, and farmers. So I said they use what they had as waste, they treat it in a sense, and then they use it as a food to some other industries. What it makes it par uh, smart is that the process reduces the build-up of phosphorus and other nutrients on pumps and pipe work. And this um, addresses a costly um, operational issue. The end product, crystal green, it's not water soluble and releases nutrients to plants in response to growing roots. So the result is that wastewater plants have an additional revenue um, stream. And there are many other um, case studies uh, available. Uh, carpet companies, uh, they used a certain fibers and certain natural dyes that the water from the carpet uh, production could use to grow strawberries. Actually, there was a very good fertilizer because it had nothing chemical um, into that. And um, another um, case study, which I don't think I mentioned there, it's about a company called Zinabis because as babies are very anti-environmental friendly. So they use a um, material that it's plastic, but it can be uh, recycled because most of them they cannot. And they can, you know, uh, I don't know how many nappies a baby use by the time it's two or three. So they start thinking about not using any chemicals and reusing uh, the waste of their processes. So that is just um, 
about the technologies about one of the case studies. Um, there is an industrial area, I think, in Denmark, in Copenhagen, and that um, the uh, one company, Swayze, the gypsum, is used as a material from the other company. So within this industrial complex, each company takes the waste from the other one and uses them in its processes. Um, similar with the car case study, um, it's the bike sharing one uh, because of the massive population, a lot of people going around on bios on bikes. So they search smart and dockless bikes, and um, we use your app. Uh, the interesting thing is, which I have it's a good case study, but after the fact I learned they didn't think it through. Uh, the parking space it's an issue, so. I was presenting that to a group of um, Chinese uh, delegates and they were telling it's not a good idea. There are bikes everywhere because they didn't think about the parking. So uh, it shows you good idea, but the implementation uh, lacked in something. Um, I think that's the company that does it. Um, and Helen MacArthur, it's um, one of the, you know, the worldwide uh, trademark organization for circular economy and I think, uh, I don't know if everybody knows her story, how she came up with the concept was because she was traveling for three months in her yacht so it wasn't a like um, very uh, working class person if you want uh, but she had to survive in limited resources because she was in the middle of the sea and then she realized how precious, uh, you know, what we have is and how much we don't appreciate it or consider it. So there is a lot more information on their website. Um, again said, um, China is ahead, uh, which surprised me in a sense, uh, on the built environment, on the mobility and the nutrition. The built environment has almost 70% waste because we go and uh, knock down things and then we, we try to bury the rumble and then we go and build other things and we don't even use the uh, the things that uh, the resource that they have inside. I used to work in a local authority in the housing department, and one year they would put new kitchens, new windows, new doors, new everything. And a couple of years later, they would just flatten the whole thing without using what they put the previous year. And then they have to use money, you know, to to replace uh, for the new one. So um, you will notice the last few years, circular economy is more and more on news. Uh, European Union has a lot of um, action plans and many governments start doing the same and some of them they link with um, a plastic because you all, you all know about uh, the plastic toy issue and what I think the problem is not the plastic per se it's people's mentality how they treat the plastic because the plastic is useful it keeps food fresh, it keeps medicine but it's our convenience and throwaway attitude that creates the, um, the problem so I'll stop here. <laughs> I hope I didn't bore you much. <laughs> um, and if you want to ask anything, feel free. Mm. Thank you. Mm.